Thank you very much for the your presentation. Uh, before my actual presentation, uh, there is a um, brief introduction by QSI that uh, presents uh, their products, uh, in particular uh, ProSum. After that, uh, I will take the, the talk uh, and uh, talking about, in particular, different features of uh, program ProSum. Welcome, everybody. I am Rocky Alessandro from QSI. We are an Italian software house that produces and develops an FEM software called ProSum. We have more than 20 years of experience in structural and geotechnical engineering field. Uh, currently, thousands of structural engineers use our software. ProSAP checks and designs under the Italian code and the Euro code, uh, masonry, steel, concrete and wood structures. ProSAM is the ProSAP's plugin which connects ProSAP with the SAM2 solver. This solver was developed by professors Magenes, Manzini and Morandi and performs multimodal, linear static and non-linear static analysis through the equivalent frame method. ProSAM and ProSAP are free for students, educational purposes, scientific research or evaluation purposes. About the ProSAM is gonna talk uh, Dr. Paolo Morandi. He's a researcher at the US Center Foundation and contributed to develop the SAM2 solver. So please, Paolo, the stage is yours. So uh, ProSAM, ProSAM is a software uh, for seismic non static analysis of measury buildings, uh, which is based uh, on, on the equivalent frame modeling approach. And uh, it uh, enables to uh, design new measury buildings, but also to assess the, the existing ones. ProSAM is based on Solver SAM2. Uh, the SAM program was developed uh, uh, in mid uh, 90s by Professor Magenis, and initially was uh, mainly devoted to the sole analysis of unreinforced measury buildings. From mid 2000s, uh, uh, SAM was uh, deeply improved uh, and was completely written in a new code, which is called the SIM2, uh, which has allowed uh, the, analyze, uh, the analysis of uh, reinforced measuring buildings, of reinforced concrete structures, and also mixed reinforced concrete measuring structures. And also, uh, in, in the last 15 years, uh, new features have been, have been added. For example, new uh, shear strain criteria, and also the possibility to consider floors and uh, dike fronts both rigid and also flexible. In the period between 2005 and 2018, SAM was adopted in the commercial software Underwall, but from 2018, SAM was adopted in the software ProSAM uh, developed by QSI. Currently, uh, the Italian norms and the Eurocode 8 uh, uh, are implemented uh, in, uh, uh, in the software. Uh, the Eurocode 8 was recently implemented both for new uh, design and also for the assessment of existing existing buildings. Uh, of course, uh, I don't want to, 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 to be to focus too much on the queer frame model and we maybe all know the, the background of, of it. The uh, measury buildings, uh, the measury elements uh, are idealized uh, using you know, beam column elements uh, um, in placed in the centroid uh, of, the, of the elements. These elements have, of course, uh, effective or uh, deformable part and one or two rigid element in order to consider the uh, actual rigidity of the connection between the vertical and the horizontal element. The equivalent frame modeling approach, of course, uh, uh, allows to consider 2D, but also 3D models where the uh, flange walls can be modeled uh, through two equivalent, sub-equivalent uh, uh, rectangular section connected by rigid links uh, at the corner of which uh, an internal edge allows uh, the uh, vertical com compatibility of displacement, of course, if this bond is not effective, uh, the model uh, and, and, and the program is able to uh, avoid it and uh, to do not consider these rigid, rigid elements. The floor and the roofs can be considered as infinite rigid, infinite deformable, and also with a limited stiffness. And the floor are, can, be, can be modeled with three or four nodes, elastic orthotropic membrane frame elements in order to actual 
um, take into account and consider properly all the types of floors from very rigid like reinforced concrete floors to very flexible like uh, timber floors uh, or even wall, even vaults. Different constitutive laws uh, uh, can be considered. Uh, in general, elastoplastic with hardening, uh, both considering the flexural and the shear response can be, can be used until a uh, defined ultimate limit in terms of deformation that uh, usually is expressed in terms of uh, coordination. So uh, the possible uh, failure criteria that have been implemented are by flexural and different strength criteria, the minimum of which is the characterization and characterize the, the nonlinear response. Elastic stiffness, of course, uh, uh, takes into account both the flexural and the shear contribu contribution based on Timoshenko theory and both the crack and the uncracked section. Different constitutive loads can be used actually in the, in the program. Uh, for example, for mesh expansion, it's possible to use elastoplastic, Close, uh, elastoplastic brittle, elastic brittle, and also elastoplastic with reduced strength constitutive loads. For what concerns the strength criteria implemented in the in the in the software in the program, uh, for example, for our reinforced measure walls, uh, there are many many strength criteria present in literature. For example, the criteria of flexure and compression, the shear due to the approach, uh, following the approach, uh, the Coulomb approach, the classical Coulomb approach. But there are also other type of uh, Shira uh, criteria that have been implemented. For example, the Mann and Müller approach that can be used for regular buildings, for regular measure, for example, brick measure, or the Tunes and Church of Ipa approach usually used uh, for irregular measure. And recently has been also included a gapping mechanism, which is a shear sort of shear mechanism that could capture very well the in-plane response uh, of measure with unfilled head joints. But the, the, the most interesting part of the presentation deals with the different example of validation of the software that have been carried out in the last 25 years. Um, have been comparison, have been done comparison with uh, nonlinear film analysis with the uh, cyclic test on reinforced walls with the experimental test, even on measure buildings, and also with the comparison with other nonlinear macro element programs, and also comparison with earthquake evidence. In this uh, uh, presentation, um, for the sake of the time, I just want to show you just these three type of validation that we use. The first one, Validation of the uh, results of the, of the program uh, against uh, the results uh, of the static cyclic test on a two-story real scale measure buildings. This building was uh, uh, studied by Magenis et al. in the mid 90s and is a two-story brick measure um, monocell mono building um, with uh, flexible floors. And different frame models have been uh, performed uh, in terms of a whole of uh, uh, different way of uh, model the, um, the spandrels, the measure spandrels. Here's some, some comparison between the experimental tests and the uh, program results. As you can see in, from, uh, from the big shear versus top displacement curves, the results are really good in terms of matching of elastic stiffness and of uh, lateral, lateral strength. Uh, just, just to know that uh, the, the, this type of analysis were, carry, were carried out only uh, just considering the, the results of the test of characterization for, for, for measuring. So an and, and usual common uh, um, criteria a geometrical criteria for uh, for the modeling of the of the building like for example to use a crack section of measure walls equal to 0 0.5 of the gross section but the other interesting uh, future of it is also that not only the force displacement curves are in agreement with the test results but also the damage pattern uh, here we can see a comparison between the damage pattern found in the experimental tests and the ones uh, uh, evaluated from, uh, from the model. 
As you can see, uh, the shear failure, the flat rush failures are pretty good uh, captured uh, by this simple uh, idealization of the, of, the, of the structure. Another example of validation that I want to show you um, is a comparison uh, uh, carried out within uh, uh, um, the benchmark project, which was a project uh, funded by the Italian Civil Protection, in which uh, um, the results uh, of different uh, nonlinear macro element program were compared one to each other in terms of different properties. For example, in this case, I want to show you the results of force displacement capacity curves on these four, on these three structures, uh, simple uh, monocell two-story structure and two buildings, BS5 and BS6, uh, which uh, are intended to be uh, actual real structure, uh, which were hit by the Central Italy airplane in 2016. As you can see below, in the, in the graphs below, in, in black, uh, you can see the force displacement curves uh, of uh, some uh, uh, program. And as you can see, you can, you can appreciate the fact that uh, the results are pretty always in line with the other uh, programs and are very uh, often uh, in the middle, in a middle interval between the results of, uh, uh, of, other, of other softwares. Finally, I would like to, to show uh, a results of validation, an example of validation, which we compared the performance of a reinforced measuring building struck by the 2012 uh, Emilia earthquake and the results of the, of the program in terms of damage pattern. As you can see here, the building was severely damaged at the base four, the story, with uh, a big, uh, I mean, huge damage in the in the in, in the in the in the piers in the walls, uh, sheer damage actually with the um, diagonal by diagonal <coughs> cracks, and also the program was uh, able to estimate uh, in a pretty good way, the failure mechanism above all the soft story that uh, uh, was created at the base uh, of the building itself. So to come to the conclusion, um, some program some tool, which is uh, current implementing software ProSAM has been widely used uh, uh, worldwide by designer, analyst, but also researcher in the last uh, 25 years. And the results of some uh, example of validation, some of which I've here reported, uh, show that uh, some two is considerable, actually a uh, effective, stable and reliable calculation tool, such to become one of the reference program of, for the benchmark of many other softwares. I would like to also add that uh, we are continuing uh, developing the, the software with implementation of new future. For example, right now we are implementing new future for uh, considering the strength criteria of the st different strength strengthening techniques like uh, FRCM of FRP. So uh, I would like uh, to thank you for your attention and- Thank you, Paolo. For the for eventual uh, uh, questions. I'm sorry for the problems that I had. Uh, Don't worry, these things are- uh can happen to the, today <laughs> in the new virtual area. <laughs> Paolo, we, we, there, are, uh, there is a question for you, yes. a speak question by the audience. Can you tell us what is the average time required for your software when you're performing a nonlinear calculation of a full building? Well, it depends a lot from the number, by the number of the, the elements, uh, all the measuring elements uh, and that are included in the building. Uh, from small buildings like the ones that I show you uh, before in the uh, in the benchmark program, uh, for one analysis, uh, you know, for example, on BS5 or BS6 uh, building, the time is about uh, one to two minutes per, per per analysis. Okay, so it's very pretty quick. So for a batch of 16 analyses, the total time is less than half an hour, I'd say. Of course, when the when the building is increased in dimension and of course in numbers of elements, uh, the, uh, the, the the analysis is slightly more uh, slow. But uh, of course, the time being more or less is is in this 
in this range. Okay, a few minutes per each uh, analysis and each combination. Okay, thank you very much. We have no no more questions. I I would like to thank you and also congratulate you and the company for the initiative of leaving uh, the software free for students, scholars, or scientific research. I think it's worth mentioning this very good initiative. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Paolo, for your contribution. Thank you. And hope to see you soon. Thank you. See you too.